Hi, Mike Masters from GE Aviation's Customer Training Services in Cincinnati. And in this GE 90 Maintenance Minute, we're going to take a look at the finer points of removing and installing the Integrated Drive Generator, or IDG. Uh, we won't look at every single little step along the way. The procedure's fairly intuitive, the maintenance manual's written very well, but there are a couple key areas that I would like to highlight to you uh, in which we could possibly uh, uh, cause problems resulting in oil loss and things of that nature. One of the most important things I want to point out in this video is the importance of using the lift fixture for the IDG. The IDG weighs about 135 pounds, which is way too much for us to try to uh, manually lift it uh, you know, out of and, and back into position. Uh, the lift fixture has all kinds of adjustments. As I say, we can adjust the, the pitch angle, the roll angle, and everything uh, to get the IDG lined up uh, with the quad ring just right during reinstallation, as you'll see. Uh, I would absolutely not want to try to remove an IDG without this lift fixture. Okay, with everything disconnected and capped and stowed from the IDG, uh, we're ready to begin the actual removal process. As I'm coming up with the lift fixture, what I'm looking for, comparing the angles of the lift fixture itself to the angles of the case of the IDG. I want to use my adjustments to make those match as closely as possible. So I'm going to use this adjustment to roll the fixture this direction a little bit. There we go, that looks pretty close. Get a little closer, see what it looks like. Okay, and I also would like to point out uh, that this training engine, it has no uh, uh, aft skirt on the accessory gearbox heat shield. Uh, with the starter air duct um, is removed as well. So the access to the IDG is a little better for me than it will be for you in the field. But the, uh, the aft skirt uh, does give you enough room to access the IDG and enough room to uh, pull it aft away from the accessory gearbox uh, before we lower it down. So now that my lift fixture is making good contact with the IDG, remember the IDG is about 135 pounds, so I want to try to uh, take a little load off of the, uh, the, the quad ring here. I want to support as much of the weight of, of the IDG as I can. And now that I have that accomplished, I can install the retaining strap. And we'll adjust that nice and snug so the IDG doesn't roll out of its lift fixture. And lock it into position. Okay, and now we're ready to release the quad ring itself. Uh, you'll notice the quad ring has a white index mark right here, and then the case of the IDG also has a white index mark down here. As we loosen our quad bolt, it'll go a little bit by hand till it re-engages, there we go. You'll notice the quad ring is rotating. Eventually, those two white index marks will align, showing that the quad ring has released. Getting closer. Now, when the quad ring releases, you'll know it. Uh, it will actually make a sound. And uh, you'll probably see the IDG jump just a little bit. Now it looks like we had our preload. Uh, uh, figured pretty well, that was pretty close. The IDG did not move that much. So really all that's left now is to pull it away from the accessory gearbox. Okay, and here we come. And I'm gonna start lowering the IDG, making sure my drive shaft isn't gonna contact anything. Lower it down a little, pull it back a little further, and now I can come all the way down. Okay, we know our drive shaft packings are always uh, one-use one items. Those are replaced every time the component is removed. 
So uh, we're going to install a new packing, even though it's brand new out of the package. I'm going to give it an inspection, make sure there are no, no defects in it. And then we're going to lubricate it with whatever oil the maintenance manual specifies. Nice uniform coat. And then I'm going to use a piece of discarded O-ring material to, uh, to help me during the installation of the new packing. Looping it through like so. I'm going to install the O-ring on the drive shaft. There we go. And this is the purpose of this discarded old O-ring material here. We don't really want to roll that new O-ring into position. We'll, we'll store twisting energy in that and we don't want that. So we'll use this piece of discarded packing to sort of loop around. And then as we push the O-ring into position, all the way back into the groove. Once we are in the groove, make a couple revolutions around it just to make sure that if we did store any of that twisting energy, uh, this will remove that. It makes the packing last longer. Now one thing you'll notice, this drive shaft on my IDG is quite a bit smaller than what you find on a new uh, production engine IDG. Um, before the engine actually went into production, the, the drive shaft was made larger in the IDG and the, obviously the input shaft or the gearbox made larger as well. What's that mean to us in the field? Uh, really nothing. Uh, either one, either configuration is uh, going to align the same. Okay, we've brought the IDG closer into position. One thing I want to point out is uh, something to look for here. You want to look at the angle of this face plate of the IDG versus the angle of the quad ring itself. And you can see we have a little angle looking like this right now. And again, that's the, the beauty of this lift fixture with this adjustment. I could correct that angle, about like so. If during the installation process, uh, the splines of the drive shaft are not aligning with the splines of the input shaft of the gearbox, we can remove the N2 motoring pad cover, engage our half inch ratchet, and bump the gearbox just a little bit until the teeth align. Okay, with the teeth of our drive shaft beginning to engage, we're now gonna look at the relationship of our IDG faceplate to the quad ring and make any adjustments we need to make to get it engaged. It looks like I need to roll it a little bit in this direction. There we go. Get closer. And now come down a little. Very, very close. A little bit of hand adjustment here. There we are. Full engagement, 360 degrees. And now we can begin to snug our quad ring bolt. Sometimes as you begin to tighten the quad bolt, uh, you'll get a couple turns on it and uh, then you'll run into resistance. What that means is the IDG is not in perfect alignment in one area or another. It's slightly out of alignment with the quad ring. So um, just uh, adjust accordingly and try the quad bolt again. As you apply the final torque to the quad bolt, it's very important to remember Follow the AMM instructions to tap it in a few places as you go. Typically you'll find, as you recheck the torque, you'll find that it's gone down a bit. There it did. We'll do that several times until we can apply the specified final torque and the tapping no longer has an effect. Again, I can't stress enough, uh, the beauty of this tool is it does all the hard work for you. With all these, uh, uh, what I again call the pitch and roll adjustments, if you're patient and you look at the quad ring and face plate uh, relationship 360 degrees, make adjustments, try it, adjust, try it. Now that takes uh, 
a lot of the risk out of installing the IDG. Okay, and those are the details of IDG removal and installation I wanted to point out. Hope you enjoy the maintenance minute, and I'll see you next time.